already gave you a high level overview of the different data types. Now we will dive a little bit deeper and look at the specifics of every data type and how we can create it. So I'll see you on the other side. Right, so we are back in Visual Studio. Now, as you can remember, um, we created a variable and set it to 15. Now, because this is an integer, we can also set it to a negative value. So let's put it to minus 915 or something like that. This also works. So positive and negative numbers. Now, there's something we can't do with integers. Now, let's see if I want to give it a comma value. So let's set it to 1.5. And as you can see, um, this will throw an error. So every time a line is um, has a red underscore, this means this is an error. Um, and it will tell you that it wants to convert this double to int. Now double is also a data type that we didn't talk about right now, but let me just show you how we can actually create uh, comma values. Now I will now create a float data type and I'll call it my float var. And then I set my float var to 1.5 and it still doesn't work. Um, now the reason this doesn't work is because whenever I create a float variable, I need to put a F in here. This F stands for float. And this marks this value to be a float. Now, if you don't use this F, it will think this is a double. Now, double is another data type, which is basically a float, but it's more precise, but less efficient and less performant. So in about 95% of the use cases, you will be using floats. That's why I won't go too much into the double data type here. However, you, it might be nice to be aware that there's also a double. So whenever you have a comma value, just use floats and you can mark a value being a float with this F at the end of the value. Now float can of course also have positive and negative values. So I can just set this to minus 1.5 and it should still be fine. Next up we have the character or the short form char and I'll just call it my char variable. And I set it to um, something like A, for example. Now, do keep in mind here, you need to use single quotes to specify that this is a character. You must not use double quotes. You must use single quotes for characters. Now let's see what happens if I write multiple characters in here and it will also again tell you that this is definitely not a character because it's three characters. Now let's see if we use one in here, this works. So one is also a character. It's a digit, but it's also a character. However, when using this character data type, you cannot uh, do arithmetic calculations with this one. So you can't calculate one plus one equals two that won't work. For that you need to use floats or integers. And it is marked with these double quotes. So they are really important. So let me just show you how important those double quotes are. Now I will just print um, my float var. Then I will print again my float var but with double quotes. And you can also see in the syntax highlighting that this is kind of a bluish color and this is kind of a reddish color. And now let's see if we hit play what happens. So as you can see in the first example, it replaced my float var with the content of this variable, which is one point, uh, negative 1.5. And in this case, it didn't replace it because it is a string, yeah? So this is text. So if you want to use text, you need to use those double quotes and the computer will immediately recognize it as a string. If you don't use them, the computer will think you mean a variable. So if I would 
uh, write something like some other var, it won't work, okay? Or if I want to use hello world, you can see it will be underscored in red because the error message already sends it. There is no hello variable in this context and no world error <laughs> variable in this context. But if I add those double quotes, it will recognize it as text and everything works. So yeah, those double quotes are pretty important. Now I just cleaned everything up a bit. And lastly, we have uh, the last important data type, which is the Boolean or short bool. And I'll call it my bool var. And my bool var can be set to true or false. So it's just those two values that it can have. And bool will be very important once we come to uh, conditional statements or the if statement, for example. So keep that in mind. We will need it later on in the course. And it's also a very, very important data type that you need to learn by heart. So these five are the most important data types that you will need to memorize. Int for whole numbers, float for comma values, char for uh, single characters, string for text, and bool for true or false. And yeah, we will use them in almost every program that we write. So you need to memorize them. There's no getting around that, unfortunately. I'm not a big fan of memorizing things, but this is really important. Next, we will look at how we should name our variables. So I'll see you there.